Welcome to the Work, Wealth, and Travel podcast. I'm your host, Nicole, and this podcast is your guide to start creating a lifestyle by design. From entrepreneurship, money and finance, taxes and residencies, and everything in between, this show highlights the nuances of a true global citizen lifestyle. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Work Wealth and Travel Podcast. So this is our Digital Nomad Digest segment with myself and with Cami. It has been a minute. I think this is our first one of 2024, maybe first or second that we've recorded. And it feels good to be back. So we've been talking for the last hour about so many different things. So it's good to be back and it's good to have our Friday, it won't be Friday anymore. It'll just kind of be released sporadically. But the conversations that I know so many of the listeners know and love, there was just a bee trying to, there's a bee in the house. So anyways, Cammy. so today we're going to chat about outgrowing your lifestyle, your, whether it be a digital nomad life, a global citizen life, it's very normal and common to out what you have now and I think it's so I don't know if stigmatize is the right word but it's it's just so maybe looked down upon to have change for a lot of things when you have a bit when you have a certain lifestyle I think it's so easy for people to look at that and say why are you changing you built up x y and z you're the expert in x y and z whatever it may be like why is change part of that But for me personally, I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't change. And I think change is such an essential part of any business, any lifestyle that's actually really worth living and that you have strived to have in the past. You need to have some sort of change. I know, Cami, you've had some changes in various different aspects of your life that you feel like it's time to outgrow. It's time to make some changes. And I have as well. So if you don't mind sharing a little bit about what that has looked like for you and your nomadic journey, kind of maybe fitting into a box and then having to outgrow that and make change from what people on the outside looking in initially saw. I am so happy to be here again because I miss you and I miss our conversations. And yes, I totally agree because a lot changed in the space that we didn't talk (laughs) Because we used to talk um, and get like and do updates every week. But yeah, I feel like, I don't know if the listeners are also having the sensation, but I feel like things are shifting so rapidly for a lot of people. And although January felt like 365 days, I think that at the same time that time is like slowing down and it's also going really fast and everything's changing for people. And yeah, for myself, I feel like, things are also changing so when i got here in paris so for those who don't know i'm still here in paris i got here in august of last year so it's been a little bit over uh, six months and my plan was to stay here for one year or longer and although i am still staying until i'm debating whether to stay here until may or june so it will be like close to one year I am feeling kind of ready to move on to a new city, which part of me hates and part of me loves. So the part of me that is still feeling like needs some stability and groundingness and just to be part of like a city is still very much alive inside of me. But there's also this other part of me that doesn't feel like this city is fitting me anymore in a way. Like, I feel just not part of the city at all. I feel like at some points, like, it's kind of pointless for me to be here in the first place. I don't know why. The cost of living is, like, super high for for what you really get. So, like, I would be up to spending the same amount of money that I spend, like, monthly here. But, I don't know, having, like, a better life, a life that I can do more things, like, go to more workout classes or go out more for food or go explore like other cities or other countries even um but it's just like it doesn't happen here in paris as a lot of you might know it's like a very high cost of living for a quality of living and i'm not even debating like the quality of i don't know like the quality of groceries that you get or the quality of the transport public transportation that you get or the government help or anything because i'm not even on that spectrum of like inside of the system of the French system 
but I'm more speaking of the quality of like you you know have money to pay your rent you pay groceries you go out with your friends you go like to workout classes you have like whatever you do a lot of things and you also have money saved up and you have money to maybe like go on little trips or something like that and when like while living here this is really not happening because it's just like so overwhelming to be on top of the prices here that this is it's just like I feel like so constricted here and I don't know I feel like although I really want my groundiness and I want to stay in one place and have a base let's say I wouldn't even say say stay in one place but I do want to have a base I think that this past six months I realized that I also want the ability the freedom and the resources to still like go on little trips you know like travel for one week come back travel for two weeks come back travel for a weekend and come back you know this is something that I don't feel like I have here and maybe I could at some point but right now if I'm like being really um (laughs) non-delusional let's say uh that's not the case and I feel like really constricted and I just don't want that feeling for myself so I feel like my time here is coming to an end, but as I always say, it depends on, like, I'm not the one that's calling the shots, quote unquote, like, my intuition is always taking the lead on that. So, yes, I've been thinking about maybe moving to the south of France. I still love being in France. I would love to continue being here in France, maybe in somewhere that's warmer and closer to the beach and things like that, because I love the ocean. But, so, yeah, so I think about the south of France. I also still think about cape town a lot i've been thinking about going there like for the past three years uh still hadn't hasn't flown but yeah maybe this is the time but i know that cape town is also not a long-term option for me and maybe right now what i want is some more that i can take a base in and like take an apartment that's mine for like one year and then maybe go to cape town for like three or six months and sub rent that apartment i don't know how that will look like but yeah those are the places kind of in my mind and yeah i feel like That is, but I'm still feeling it out. I don't like to like rush these decisions, you know, like, because otherwise I would be moving all the time. (laughs) Yeah, totally. And I think that's so, like, I love that you're so open about that because on the topic of growth and change in living a global citizen, digital nomad life, it's not always, but I think it is very common for you to see somebody traveling, not you, just in general, to see somebody traveling online, of course, which you can never really see the full reality of things, but traveling full time. And then there becomes a pressure of that person is traveling full time. So then they have to continue living life that way, even if they have outgrown it, even if they do want something slower, kind of like my partner and I, you know, we were traveling the last three years pretty quickly. And for 2024, we really took a look at our life and it's like, well, what is intuitively, what do we actually really want? Instead of just going along with what other people see us doing and say like, oh my gosh, that looks so fun and amazing. And what's on social media? What do we actually really want? So we had to reassess what 2024 is going to look like, which I know I've talked about in previous New Year's episodes on this podcast. And, you know, we figured out it looks like maybe being in places for longer. Like I was just speaking to you before we hit record and maybe being in Sao Paulo for, I mean, I'm hesitant to do anywhere for six months just because of residency, but (laughs) not that that's the only thing that goes into it, but just to play it safe. But, you know, like for three, four or five months and really having not a home base, still being pretty transient, but having other priorities that aren't just travel. And not feeling like you have to keep up to the expectation of traveling all the time and being somewhere new and different right now. We're in Mexico and we'll probably stay in Mexico for quite a while. There's so much to do here. There's so much to see here. There's so many opportunities, especially somewhere like Mexico City where I am now. So really figuring out what the change in the growth looks like and then what the priorities are and not just feeling like you you kind of have to keep up with the Joneses in a sense, even though, of course, you're not living like the American dream, traditional Western life. but you're keeping up with the Joneses in a digital sense, a traveling sense, if if that makes sense. I don't know. That's kind of my, the way that I, I can relate it that I have definitely felt in the past before. But I think it's important to be like very intuitive, not only in travel, but also in business, which I know we were talking about off air as well. And I have done pivots in business. You have done slash are wanting to do pivots in business and maybe it's more than just a pivot. Sometimes. Maybe it's like a completely new business and that is just what makes sense for you, which is good. 
you know, we are always growing and changing. And if we're growing and changing in a different direction, then why would you not want to pursue that? If you're growing and changing in the same direction, but you just want to continue leveling up, that's also growth and change as well. Yeah, I think what you said about priority is a very big theme. And I think that if we don't stop to really analyze the life that we're living and the this and where the decisions that we're take that we're taking are taking us in the sense of okay, right now I'm deciding to I don't know, stay in Paris. Is this aligned to what I want in I don't know, a couple of months or a couple of years, you know, it doesn't have to be like, it is a line in 30 years. Cause like, I don't know what's going to happen in 30 years. Maybe we'll all be living in the moon, you know, at this point in society and in the world. But I think that it's important for us to understand. Cause I feel like I was talking to a friend of mine here that lives in Paris. She's been living here for 11 years now and she's a bit older than me. So, so she's 40 right now. So she got here exactly at my age when I got here. And she felt a lot of the things that I am feeling in the city. But instead of leaving, she, she, leaving, she kind of like pushed it through. And right now at 40 years old, she's having the same thoughts and the same frustrations that I am having. But And she's telling me like, I really wish that I could counter argue with you, but I feel you and I hope that you make the decisions that are aligned to you and that make sense to your life and that you prioritize what is important for you. Because otherwise you continue being in this red race just like me, because I saw myself, like I see myself being in it, you know? And I think that a lot of people do that in several different ways of living. I think that digital nomads are also doing this. Like people, I don't know, in spiritual communities are also doing that. When you don't stop to think about what is the vision that you have for your life, what is the strategy that you want to use to get there, and how you and how all of the decisions that you are taking have to be in line with that. Like putting your money where your mouth is, you know, instead of saying like, I want, like, for example, me saying, I want stability, like my priority is stability and then going to South Africa for another six months and not knowing where, I, where I'm going to live when I come back. Maybe that's what I'm going to end up doing. Like, who cares? I don't care. Like, really, that's the problem for Camille of the future. But I think that when I am facing this decision, because I know that my priority is stability, I'm going to try to make a decision that is the most, that will allow me to have that instead of just going with the default way of making my decisions of like I this looks looks really fun whatever like I'm going there you know and then being in in Cape Town for six months and then being really pissed at myself because I didn't provide myself what I really wanted in their present moment and I think that if we continue to while if we don't think about that we're still forcing ourselves in this box that maybe it's not our box anymore you know maybe we have out, outgrown it and that's why I think it's so important to I don't know, question ourselves and like question whether this thing is authentic to you or not, because maybe at a certain point it was. And I'm sure that like when I got here, it was. And I think that it still is. I don't just don't know how for how long it will stay like this. But it's important that I'm allowing myself to like have doubts and questions and allow myself to change because otherwise I'll just like be stuck here and then frustrated with myself and then I like I'll get angry at the cashier in the supermarket out of nowhere you know just because I'm like feeling pissed at my life and it uh, you know and I'm like leash, l lashing out on people so yeah I think that's just so important to put your blinders on and question your own your own stuff without worrying so much about what other people will think and how they will judge your decisions you know I have a lot of like, oh my God, why would you leave Paris? Like, Paris is so perfect. It's like, have you ever lived here for longer than, I don't know, like one month? Like, you know exactly what I'm saying, you know? Or like, oh my God, you're leaving Paris already. But like, then where are you going? Where are you living? Like, isn't it weird that you're constantly like, that you can't decide where to live? You know, like, I have a lot of judgment like this from friends and family. Not that they're doing it on purpose. They're just confused because it's such a different life. And it feels... For them, it looks like I'm constantly lost, but it's not It's not really because I know that I'm following something that's deeper, but it's not common, you know? So, of course, they feel like that, which is normal. I resonate with all of that. And you talking about your friend who's there and who it sounds like stayed 10 years too long, quite honestly, I feel like it's very easy to get stuck in that trap. And then you kind of become an expat. And I saw this in China where I think it's very common in Asia and Latin America, where it's very low cost to live. And 
you know, you, for whatever reason, you end up in another country and then you just get stuck in that trap. But there were so many people thinking on my experience in China specifically, but you can see this all over Asia for sure, where they're so unhappy, but they have like dug themselves so deep into a hole that they don't know how to get out of it and they don't see a way to get out of it. It's not like, oh, I could go to another country or I could even maybe go home. It's life is cheap here. This is my home. Like I know everything here. Life is very easy. And so you just stay forever, but you stay way too long, like way past the deadline. There were so many expats in China that I could just think of her that are in the foreigner hub and they're making, you know, it's not like amazing money, but it's, it's good money for China, like enough to really live and have a good life there and living as easy as a foreigner. And so you just, you stay. And I think that's unfortunately very common. And then there's also, that's for the expat trap, I guess you could say. But then there's also a very similar, like we spoke about, perspective of the nomad trap, where maybe you are just perpetually traveling. So yeah, I think that um, change is so important, but it's also like change is difficult too. And for me, I always try to remind myself, like if the reason I'm living this lifestyle is because I want to always be growing and changing and like growth is a big part of that for me as well like personal and in the business but if I I have to always be leveling up and growing and changing things in order for me to be somewhere new or my business to hit new levels you know if I, I just stay where I am well then I'm I'm just gonna stay where I am forever yeah that's interesting for me i feel like the reason why i started to live this life was because i wanted to feel happy and fulfilled which are really big emotions to put on a lifestyle let's say and i can say for sure that those things didn't bring like living this way didn't bring me a direct line to happiness and fulfillment but i know how much more happy and how much more fulfilled I am by living in this way. Although I also question it a lot, especially when I compare myself to other people who have a more quote-unquote stable life. And I think to myself, like, am I, like, am do I feel successful? You know, like, do I feel successful in my life? Like, if you think of success in, because I think that success is also many different things for many different people. But if you think of success in like the traditional way, like, ah, build a corporate career, blah, 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 whatever, I'm not successful. If you think of success in like, you have lived in multiple different places in the world and you have traveled all around, around, like I am really successful, you know, and you have followed your dreams and you have followed your heart and I'm like extremely successful. But uh, I think it's really like, it's such a, it's a challenge because I don't wake up feeling happy and fulfilled every day. So if you also put, as I'm sure that you don't feel like you're growing every day, you know, so it's easy sometimes to also go like, ah, if I'm not feeling this every day, then I'm just going to bounce and like change my lifestyle completely. And you have to really pace yourself to kind of have an overview and not like just go instinctively and do whatever (laughs) you are feeling like on the, on the day. And I have learned how to do that. And because from my experience in the past, like I know that I, have taken some uh, decisions that were a little bit too too, too quick, I, I don't know, I would say. Uh, but I think that overall is just the, the, like, you have to have your compass of, like, why am I doing this? Like, why am I, wh- what am I seeking? And then asking yourself if whatever you're living and the decisions that you're making are in line with that. And I think that for me, First, when I decided to like leave Greece, I realized that it wasn't, you know, I just felt stuck and I felt like I wasn't growing. I didn't feel fulfilled. I knew that I needed a change. I knew that I needed a bigger city and everything. So I came here and I was really fulfilled and really happy. And right now I'm just starting to feel like some things are not in alignment and I'm starting to like analyze what are those things? What are the elements that I feel like are missing? Plus, what are the elements that I felt like were missing before so I can make a decision that is well-informed and, of course, like in alignment with my intuition and everything, but at the same time, considering all of the data that I've been collecting in the past years and a half of traveling, of what is the next aligned step for me. So I think at this point is to find some place that's like a rent of like at least one year that maybe I can sublet or something like that. I can rent it out when I'm not there. But I still 
have that place that is mine but it still allows me to move around and have this freedom because I have seen for the past six months that this is something that's still really important for me whereas I thought it wasn't six months ago but yeah it is it's like data collection basically totally totally agree and it's like think of how unhappy you would be if you did weren't able to critically think about that and therefore weren't able to make that change like oh my gosh who, who wants to be stuck in that life even if you're not living a travel like lifestyle and you're just living you know the traditional like I guess let's call it the American dream lifestyle like you I don't know I guess I can't speak for those people because I'm not those people but I still feel like you need change and that could even look like different seasons of life where like you're buying a home and then you're having kids and like to just stay the same it works for some people but for me I'm just like gosh that is not a life that I would ever want but this is this has been a really interesting episode I mean we could definitely like go on and on about this topic because there's so many different areas of life that this could apply to but I think that for us and in this lifestyle, these are really two of the main ones. Of course, there are others as well, but really two of the biggest overarching areas. So this has been a really interesting episode. Thank you for joining me here, Cami, talking about growth, change, and what that looks like from a very untraditional life perspective. And if you are listening and you are wanting to live a different, untraditional lifestyle or you're feeling like you want to start making change in your life, listen to this episode again. This is It's okay to want something different. It doesn't always have to stay the same. And why would you want it to as well? So thank you for joining us here in this episode. We will be back with you at some point. It's not going to be every Friday now, but it is going to be Digital Nomad Digest still going strong with myself and Cami. These episodes are now released not only on all of the best podcasts to your favorite podcast player, but also on YouTube. So head to my YouTube. The link is in the show notes below. And all of the podcast episodes, as well as my content regarding residency, citizenships, tax optimization, all of the things for global citizens is linked below along with Cammy's links for YouTube and all of her social medias. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next episode. You've just listened to the Work, Wealth, and Travel podcast. If anything from this episode resonated with you, I would appreciate if you share this podcast on your socials. And of course, be sure to tag me. And don't forget to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Thank you for joining me on this global citizen journey, and I'll see you in the next episode.